So in this video, we are going to be talking about how to graph sinusoidal functions. And the example that we're going to take a look at is the sine curve, but we'll also talk about how to approach the other ones too. So the first thing is, is we are going to look at our special triangle angles. So I'm going to first take a look at pi over 6. I'll convert pi over 6 to degrees, which gives 30 degrees. I'll figure out which quadrant it's located in. In this case, it's in quadrant 1. I'll draw my right triangle with uh, the perpendicular side to the x-axis. I'm going to label my sides based on the 30, 60, 90 ratios. So n and root 3 and 2n. And then I'll calculate the sine of the angle, which would be y over r. In other words, my y side over my hypotenuse. So n over 2n, which is 1 half. The next ratio is the cosine, and that's equal to my x length over my radius otherwise the, known as the hypotenuse, so n root 3 over 2n, which is root 3 over 2, and if we find the decimal approximation to that, it's about 0.866. The next ratio is going to be the tangent ratio, which is defined as y over x, the y coordinate over the x coordinate, so n over n root 3, which will reduce to 1 over square root of 3, which is about 0.577. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fill in the values in the column for pi over 6. And if we're um, insightful about this, we shouldn't have to go through redrawing our triangles each and every time for all of these angles, but using the idea of the fact that you're going to have reference angles in the other three quadrants, you should be able to hopefully fill in the spaces pretty quickly. So now what we're going to do is we're going to sketch a graph of the angle versus our sine ratio. So I'll fill in the approximations for all of my sine ratios, and I'd go through the same process each and every time, drawing my triangles and finding my ratios, and then I'd think about how that would differ if I was in quadrant 2 or 3 or so on and so forth. So on my y-axis, I'm going to draw y equals sine of theta. In other words, I'm going to be plotting my ratio values. And on the x-axis, I'm going to be plotting my angle values. So we're going to go in multiples of pi over 6. So that's 30. Next one's 60, which is pi over 3. The next one's 90, which is pi. So I'm going to go and label my y's in multiples of 0.25. So I've got 0.5 and then up to 1. I'll do the same thing going in the negative y direction. So I'm going to plot the point 0, 0. My angle of 0 is a sine ratio of 0. Then my angle is pi over 6. My sine ratio is 0. 0.5. Then I'm going to go halfway between my 30 and my 60 to 45 degrees, which is pi over 4. And I'm going to plot 0. 0.707, which is slightly below 0. 0.75. And then at pi over 3, I have a plot for 0. 0.866 approximately. And then at pi, I have a height value, a ratio value of 1. And then I'm going to connect the dots with a curve. So repeat this process for the other remaining angles between 0 and 2 pi. Finish plotting your sine function, and then do the same thing for your other trig ratios. By the end, you'll have produced three different trigonometric graphs, one for sine, one for cosine, and one for tangent. By using the reciprocals of the values in your chart, you can also then produce graphs for the reciprocal functions of cosecant, secant, and cotangent.